when I watch the videos, sometimes it's like it doesn't it doesn't record right away, so it's weird. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode five of Acquisitions Inc. The Orrery of the Wanderer. We are playing through um, the adventure that's in the new book, the Acquisitions Inc. book, uh, that came out very recently, and. A good portion of the book is just an adventure, uh, like half the book. So, we're playing through it. And I also noticed that it's on D&D Beyond. It's like 30 bucks. So I've been thinking about getting it, actually, just because it has all the maps. And it has two versions. It has a DM's version and a player's version. And uh, that'll be handy for this. So, uh, we'll see. Maybe next time I'll have that. I don't know. So, um, the last time... Let's see. So far in this campaign... The heroes, um, in Waterdeep, there was an earthquake, and there was a fissure. The group went inside the fissure, where there was a dungeon, and they found the piece of some kind of orrery. And they're pretty sure it's a magic item, and if they can find all the pieces and put them into the orrery, something will happen. Um, and so they did all that, and then Omen Dran was impressed and told them that in a nearby town called Fandalin, uh, there's an Acquisitions Incorporated franchise that has just stopped answering all messages. And nobody knows what's going on. And so Omen has asked the group to go check it out. So before the group set out, they're still in the city of Waterdeep. Last time they had done some downtime activities. They tried to learn more about the Orrery. They helped their little dragon friend regain her breath weapon. Uh, they tried to study the altar. And they did some business stuff with their various businesses. So, you're in Waterdeep. You're in Trollskull Manor. And, hey, Lord Arctic Frost, how's it going? And, uh... Also, if you look on Twitter... Yeah? I just posted a link to... Oh, that's right. The, uh... I'm, I'm working on a handbook for this campaign. Well, you can't really see yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, most, most of it was actually written by Dylan. And most of the art was by Dylan. Thank you, Dylan. All yeah. I did was cut and paste it into a PDF. <laughs> so what you're saying is hey, Dylan is making a handbook. Dylan is making a handbook. <laughs> <laughs> I should put by Sean in like huge letters on the page. <laughs> and and uh, did all like the words. <laughs> oh, thank you. Jeanette put the, uh, the link to it in the chat. Uh, so the most handy part actually is the Troll Skull Manor list of employees, patrons... Things that are in so there, many. Troll Skull Alley, all that stuff. Yeah. So um, you haven't set out yet. Well, and uh, uh, maybe I should list. Okay, wait. So oh, don't oh, yeah. forget that your bar is tended by an invisible poltergeist named Lif, L-I-F. Um, who else? There's a kobold named Liquid Gel. Certainly who is. Works in the kitchen. There's a goblin named Ranch, who's very raunchy. There's a goblin obsessed with body hair. Mott the Shaved. Where did these come from? Apple Face. <laughs> goblin. Uh, Sparky Boom Boom, who's like Harry Potter. Home Dog's dead. We need to, I need to update that. And oh, I forgot one of my favorites. Fur Daddy Jr., a goblin obsessed with parenting? Yeah. Oh, and he sees Sunspot as his fur daddy and Yami as his fur mommy, which should be fur Yami. Fur Yami, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so there's all these people. And there's also an artist named Thacko Cumley, one of my finer. Oh, and Silver Silverton is there, an adventurer outfitted entirely in silver. He has a sister named Sarah and a brother named Sterling. <laughs> So you're in the bar. Silver mm. Silverton says, hello. And Thacko Cumley is busy painting away. Hi, Silver. I said hello. Hello. Would you like hello. to try a new dish that we are testing out? <laughs> I suppose so, as long as it only costs one silver. Well... It might be a little bit more than that, but I mean, you can pay entirely in silver if you'd like. I don't know if you know this, but I only spend the silver pieces. <laughs> Meanwhile, I look over at like Chris Crash, who's like counting all the silver. 
Oh, I was actually debating on pickpocketing him while you're talking. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I guess you could. Uh, but yeah, Yami will uh, bring out a new dish that we have called the butter skull, which <laughs> is just a mold of a troll skull made completely of butter with melted butter inside of it. Mm. Wow. Sounds delicious, doesn't it? <laughs> Sounds like a southern treat. I think I, have to, I think I have to make a flavor check right now. Mm. So uh, one of the other things we use on this show, besides Sirenscape, which you're hearing the town noises from right now, I use a thing called Tabletop Simulator. So on the screen in the center, you'll see uh, the minis that I use, I'm use. i using today for the group. So let's see. I'll start. I guess I'll just go from left to right. This one represents Sidrus. I know it's not close, but... Um, <laughs> That's like, it was hard. Uh, there's no tritons. Hmm. That one looks a lot like Dieth. I like that one. Then <laughs> next over, this red slime lady, who's not anatomically correct. Uh, that's <laughs> Kuriyami. And then I actually found a kobold. Yeah, this I just saw that. Is cool. Crash Crash. And then on the end, eh, it doesn't look that much like Solaris, but there's not a lot. Oh, I did find more ladies. Although a lot of them are just one solid chunk of color. They're not mm. painted. They're just like all blue or all red or whatever. But something. All right. So those are the characters. Oh, and to represent their friend Chad Bruski, who's a keg robot, who's right to next to me. Right there. <laughs> oh. uh, is this blob of metal. Yeah. <laughs> so I want to make a flavor check, right? All right. So let's see. i got to zoom out here on the table. Does Find silver silver like butter. Right here. And it's simple. This is just going to be high is good, low is bad. How? What? what does Silver Silverton think of this butter skull? He puts it up to his mouth. He tastes it softly. I twist the die. Three. He really, really likes it. He gets an 18. <gasps> oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. What's going on the menu then? <laughs> Um, as, as he's tasting the butter skull, um, a group of people come in. A while back, you had formed an organization known as TABS, which is yeah. the uh, Troll Skull Alley Business Society. <laughs> they all come in and want to talk with you. Yes. Yeah. Meeting. The members of this group, Fala, the druid, and her sidekick, a podling from Dark Crystal, <laughs> oh god I think Pigeon and Sidrus are actually members yeah uh, Vincent Trench the mysterious detective Tally a half-elf carpenter Nim a nimble right who you had helped out in uh, Dragon Heist uh, Avi and Embry to Genasis and Richelle the page turner who runs mm. a bookstore the one I always forget <laughs> Richelle the page turner says We've been talking, and we hear you're going to be going to Fandalen. Hmm. Wow, word gets around fast. Tabs wants to go with you. Yeah? We'll set up oh, stalls. Wow. Perhaps expand our businesses outwardly. You, you, hmm. Yes, very good, very good. I actually had the same idea, so we can totally do that. That sounds like a perfect opportunity for all of us. Now, what this has done, you see, is Dylan did art from the members of Tabs. Now, in each episode, I can use their art on one of the title screens. <laughs> Look at him. Very slow. So expect, expect them to appear at least once in every episode. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Excellent. Although, I think this one is going to feature Chad Bruski, so I should have him do something cool this episode. Okay. He's sitting at your table. His hat is to the side. Um... He's drinking beers to fill up his inner keg. Mm. New their page. So, um, there you go. You're in Troll Skull Manor. You know you're supposed to go to Fandalen. What do you want to do? So, uh, travel arrangements, Yami. What do you think? Any ideas? That's a good question. Well, we should probably get, like... I mean, if we're coming with so many people, we should probably get, like, wagons or something. Well, I mean, there's caravans all the time. My parents worked on them, so. Okay. 
usually more cost efficient if you can group up with somebody who's already on a caravan. That's a good point. Plus, they already come with protection on the road. Well, if if you know a way to set us up with the caravan, Solaris, since you're familiar with it. Um, sure, yeah. I can I can make some uh, some inquiries and see if I can get us uh, some travel arrangements. Hmm. So Solaris would attempt to reach out to some of her Water Davian contacts. To well, her- as you're about to leave Troll Skull Manor, your fiance. <gasps> Oh. Rene never ember steps into Troll Skull Manor. Oh, Rene, hi. Is there like a convenient for... breeze so his hair is like flowing? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then the wide shot pans out and the kobolds are doing this. <laughs> what are they like? He's like stretching and like one button pops off his shirt. He's like, whoops. Oh, oh, they're fan. Whoa. They're fanning. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, he's like. Oh, I can take care of that. Oh. Oh, all right. <laughs> That's nothing for me. I'm fabulously wealthy. <laughs> all right, Renair, we've talked about not bragging about that and using your wealth for something useful. <laughs> you, should, mm. you should brag about it, Solaris. I mean... No, no, it's fine. Pretty nice. I mean, I can't help it that my dad rules Neverwinter. Yeah, but your dad's kind of a jerk. Not for long. I look at Yami and smile. <laughs> yes, he looks away. It's quite a burden. Mm. Crunches his fist. You have to be a better person than your father was. And it's not hard, believe me. I've met your father. What's that never winter? And I point at I point at Renair. Well he is. And also the city is, and his father is. It's long story. Yeah. There's a lot of nevers there. Mm Mm-hmm. Did they Mm. ever hear that you never say never? It's weird. Whatever you do. Mm. Mm. Hmm. Are you talking so, about the Never Winter Wood or the Never Death Cemetery? <laughs> never Ember, Never Death, Never Winter. Yeah, there's or, a lot there. Or or the, the, the city in the Shadowfell that mirrors it, the <laughs> Never Dark. That's right. <laughs> oh, God, really? Is it, is it like the Shadowfell version called Everdeath or something? That's what it is. It's Everdeath. Ever yeah. Or Evernight. 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 Yeah. We yeah. went there in one of our campaigns. <laughs> God. It's apparently like the one light in the beacon that is Shadowfell or something. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Of course yeah. it is. <laughs> of course. Oh my god. Yeah. So I, there, I attempt you... to pick pockets uh, the silver. <laughs> god damn it. Silver Silverton. I got a nat 20. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. You pick his pocket and you get a pouch with, I'm going to roll this d20 to see how many silver are in his pocket. Looks like six silver pieces. Oh boy. My oh my. And they're gone. <laughs> All right. Um. Yeah. So, Renair says, "Oh, I can. I'll get you some horses and carts, and then and Good you can man. be on your way." Are you going to come with us, or do you have business you have to attend to here? I'm afraid I'm needed here, in Waterdeep. Mm. <sighs> of course you are. There You're you a very important person, darling. I give him a kiss on the cheek. Stay out of trouble while we're gone. We don't want to have to come and rescue you when we get back. Yeah, really. Though, actually, I mean, if we have to come and rescue, I'm okay with it. I'm sure I'll be fine. Nothing will get in the way of our wedding for that, I am certain. Mm. Yeah, the only thing I keep thinking is that somebody like the Xanathar is going to try to crash it because we crashed their big party. Well, we got rich and they didn't. He like nervously looks around. Dunk. That's no. <laughs> okay. I think it's kind of bad luck to say that. Yeah, you should like knock on wood. I don't Jeez. believe in bad luck. Wait, I think back. There's a flash of memory to touching an altar. There's a flash of memory of picking up a sword that would never fall out of my hand. And I walk <laughs> over and knock on the bar. Mm. There's, there's just fires and there's a big glowing red eye, beholder eye in the background. Dun 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 dun. <laughs> Sidris, um, as they're yakking away, you notice many of the fabulous items in the Noodle Troll. There's a miniature statue of their dead friend, Slim Dyrick. He's holding he's holding a chalkboard with today's specials on it. Yes, he is. <laughs> I love it. He's dead. He died a dramatic death. How, didn't he die 
in a tower. He got shot a bunch of times. No, no, he, no he, he survived blew up the sewers. Where did yeah. he die? Oh, he blew up in the sewers. Right. He went out in grand fashion. Xanathar isn't even a base anymore because of Slim. If Xanathar could, he probably would true resurrect him just to kill him again. <laughs> probably. There's a, a review of the Noodle Trolls opening night. And it was on that night where Were Rats attacked. They were sent by your rival who runs Froon's Brews. Mm-hmm. There's a headline about the sinking of Jarlaxle's flagship, the Eye Catcher. There's a painting of Kuriyami posing as one of the eight famous statues in the city, the God Catcher. And that's by Thacko Cumley, who's yeah. in there right now. Uh, there's paintings of a hellhound and a painting of a minotaur, both by a famous painter, the group bet, who could actually make her paintings come to life by touching them. There's a troll skull. There's a magic mirror that they got from Under Mountain that makes shadow clones of Kuriyami. There's a... Oh, and somewhere in this building, Solaris is working on a mechanical beholder. Which actually, one of... the Nim, the nimble rate, could actually help you with that. I would completely let Nim help me because Nim is a talented inventor. And that's actually in the book on page 219, the mechanical beholder there. It is one of the new vehicles, correct? Uh, now they have vehicles, things to go to the salt marsh. <sighs> it's, a, it's a whole thing. Yep. It's got yep. all sorts of stuff. Cargo crew, cargo capacity, travels three miles per hour. Nice. It's the whole thing. So you're working on that. Yes. Almost. It won't quite be ready for this trip. No, um, it's okay. It needs to be perfect. There's a taxidermy gazer. It's a tiny little beholder. There's the head of a clockwork person. A nimble right. Carved to look like the face of an oni. And I guess in a jar, there's an evil cursed heart. Just in, in the... In the tavern. Oh. Don't touch that. <laughs> would you Would you guys be fine? Because I thought Chris Crash added it to his horde. He did. The first line defense, and it's got like 50,000 signs saying on it, like, most valuable treasure do not touch. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's like down at the bottom of the stairs in the basement. There's a treasure <laughs> hoard behind it that's growing, and the, and the heart's like right in the jar at the front of the hoard. I like to imagine it's just sitting at the bottom of the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> so, um, tabs looks at you mm. with all their stuff already packed. <laughs> well, um... Let's be off. We're burning daylight. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm in no rush. <laughs> Alright. So, um, the podling begins to play on its flute device. Bless. Boodle-loop, boodle-loop. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. And then it says, as you... It says, Valavam! Valavam! Hmm. You know what makes me sad is that our goblin DJ friend never got to meet the podling. Home dog. Home dog never got to meet the, the podling. Oh, is oh, dead. All we need now is a big like crab humanoid thing to burst through the wall. The podling's <laughs> just like ah. It's true. I may or may not have watched it over the week. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, getting in your carts and heading out. Yeah, shoot. Bruce Crash empties all of his valuables in the basement. And he sets up a bunch of little crazy traps, but after that, he's, he's hacked. A.K.A. he didn't bring anything but, like, a dagger. Mm. All right, let's see here. Get this. Solaris takes some travel money with her, but leaves her fortune safely hidden. She may have added some more traps to it since Chris Crash moved in. <laughs> she loves that little kobold, but she doesn't trust him with her gold. Probably caught me in like a noose. I'm like hanging upside down by my ankle or something. Mm-hmm. All right. So you begin to travel on the high road. Let me turn on my forest noises. Oh, high road. Take me home. Oh, it's a little loud. To the place I belong. Mandolin. <laughs> it's sunny out. There's a couple clouds. Birds are chirping. There's a gentle breeze. The clip-clopping of your horse's hooves fill the air. Uh, here's a bow shot noise just for fun. Oh, shit! There's a critical! <laughs> Ooh, man. All right. So you travel for a while. Hmm. And then... 
This part of the high road runs parallel to the mirror of dead men, a swamp full of dangers, pestilence, and death. Alongside the road, a lizard folk is pleading with a male human dressed in black leather. Behind the dark figure, two bugbears stand with their morning stars drawn, staring at the lizard folk with menace in their eyes. The human shouts loudly enough for you to hear. Not acceptable, friends. Show this walking fish my displeasure. The hey. lizard folk starts to argue, saying, I am not a fish. I am... But the bugbears interrupt with the hafts of their weapons, knocking the wind out of the lizard folk and driving it to its knees. The poor creature catches sight of your party, looking at all of you with a pleading expression. What's, uh... What's going on here? Um, Gentlemen. They turn. The male human leading these bugbears says, mind your business. This has nothing to do with you. Well, the odds don't look very fair. What did this dangerous creature that you have to uh, outnumber do to you all? Hmm. This is just a simple business transaction. It doesn't um, concern you. You know, we're part of a we're part of a business organization and I don't think any of us here do business like that. Not usually. Which cast cast invisibility. Uh oh. A wire and just I... rubbed my foot and really creeped me out. I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Wait, you cast invisibility? Yeah. In front of them? No. I'm I'm assuming that I'm still in the wagon or something. So you're still in the wagon, and you cast invisibility on yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, that deserves a spell noise. Can can I make a perception check and just like kind of look around to make sure that they don't have hidden people around with them? That's a good. Go ahead. Hey, yeah. hey I'm an I'm an investigative type, and I have eye for detail, so I'm doing that. <laughs> All right, I got a thirteen. Pretty sure it's just them. All right. Hmm. Solaris is going to uh, kind of pop down from the wagon she's riding in. Not draw weapons or anything like that, but just say, well, I'd like to know what um, exactly warrants you attacking someone who doesn't look like they're defending themselves. This looks more like, yeah, this isn't this isn't a really good situation to me. His two bugbear sidekicks growl. Now, now. Approach you, clenching their fists. Mm, boys, Gentle. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Chris, Chris Crash tries to sneak around them to flank. All right, you have advantage. Go ahead. <clears throat> oh, I helped a little bit. Let's see. On D and D Beyond. Mm -hmm. You go after the bugbears or the boss? Uh, the bugbears, because they're advancing oh first. God. Madman. Mm, dirty 20. All right. You uh, invisibly sneak around behind the bugbears. Mm -hmm. The bugbears look down at you, Solaris. Intimidating. You can't help but notice I... their fur has a glossy sheen. I just stand there looking at them. I cross my arms and I go, yeah. And what now? Are you going to take a swing at me when I've done nothing but just inquire about the well-being of this person? Hmm. They shrug. They look <laughs> back. The man sighs. Go ahead. Show her we mean business. And one of them oh, tries oh. to give you a uh, strike you. Oh with, no. With a bugbear type thing. Would I be able to strike them simultaneously? Uh, no. They... Okay. They're initiating okay. this. All right. Okay. All right, here we go. One bugbear. Oh. They have advantage, don't they? A 19 on Solaris. Oh, that'll hit her. Oh, that so all? he smacks you with the back of his hand, and you take... Oh, just hand. Okay, that's not bad. Uh, my handwriting. What did I do here? That must be a... <laughs> that's got to be a four... Four damage. Okay. All right. I use Uncanny Dodge to have that. So I take two. So I just sort of like, he still gets me, but my face isn't exactly where he thought it was. Like, I move so quickly. Was I right? 
Oh, wait, no. Sorry. Eleven. Oh, shit. Oh. <laughs> Definitely using Uncanny Dodge to have that. Yeah, I, th I thought they had something special. Okay. Eleven! <laughs> you All take right. eleven damage. So, yeah, I mix up four and eleven. Yeah, right? <laughs> I was thinking maybe nine, because nine yeah. kind of looks like four sometimes. It's, it's a bugbear. I was like, it can't be 11. It's a bugbear. So I like to think that, like, she, she, her head, like, is, she pulls it back, doesn't get it completely out of the way, so he still gets a slap off. And, you know, you see her head kind of go with the slap, and as it does, you hear the sheik as in one hand a dagger is being drawn, and the other, there's a moonlight glow as her sword's coming out, too. And she just spits blood and goes, oh, no, that was a bad idea. Oh. <laughs> All right. And, we uh, turn into this, now, too. Now, Krish, what did you want to do? You were invisible. You see at, one strike. At that point, I have jumped onto its back, and I stamp it, and invisibility turns off. All right, so you can roll the hit with advantage. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I almost crit. All right, so it's not going to be much. I'm only, I, I'm not that rogue. So it's only 11 piercing damage. 11. Hey, nice. He did 11, you did 11. Good job. All right, so when we roll initiative, I'm just going to count this initiative for the entire session. All right. It takes a while, oh, boy. Do I still have uh, advantage on initiative from the, the dungeon we did? No, it's been a while since. It's been okay. at least a day. Oh, did Yami ever not be green? Oh, yeah. Still green for a long time. God damn it! <laughs> Monster <laughs> initiative. Okay, so Chris is green too. Got it. Snappy stab. NPC initiative. At least I can blend into the natural environment now. <laughs> I like to think it's like that green right there, that flame. So it's like <laughs> not possible to blend in at all. Solaris, what'd you get? I got a nine. What about Krish? 19. What about Sidrus? 12. And Yami? 8. Oh, Yami. Alright. Time for the DM secret. What? If there's a tie, the DM uh... wins. <laughs> Don't Sad tell eight. the players. <laughs> Under no circumstances shall you tell the player. <laughs> <laughs> yes, viewers, it'll be bet it's between you and me, viewer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Chris, you stab a bugbear. Mm -hmm. Let's play some battle sounds. There we go. I'm like a little hobbit in the back of a mountain troll. <laughs> <laughs> and you get to go again, Chris. What would you like to do? Well, it would only be natural. I think he would stab again. So it's not, it's not most effective. But uh, wait, is Solaris within five feet? Mm -hmm. No, you're on the opposite side. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. Well, it's, know... within, it's within five feet of the target. Yeah. Yes. Not you. Would, would I still get sneak attack? Because I know in fifth flanking isn't a thing. No, we both have to be within five feet of the same bad guy together. Uh, okay. Okay. You got it. Okay, so I rolled a nine. Let's see how well that did. Uh, 15? 15. Actually misses the bugbear. Okay. Um, and after that second stab, um, uses bonus action to disengage and then moves back towards the wagon. Towards the wagon? Mm-hmm. 25 feet, right? 5, 10, 15. I'll put you over here by the horsey. Okay. okay. Uh, after Krish is Sidris. Okay. Well, I'm going to stand up on the wagon and I'm going to take out my violin and begin bl playing some background music for my very motivational speech that I'm going to give. Oh, I so, got you on the wagon. Cool. So my motivational speech, I will address my allies. Um, and five of them. So I'll just get the whole party. And for the duration, each affected creature gains five 
temporary hit points and has advantage on saving throws. If an effective creature is hit by an attack, it has advantage on the next attack roll it makes. And once an affected creature loses the temporary hit points granted by the spell, the spell ends for that creature. So I'm going to say, my friends, we need to deal with this surely a bandit problem in front of us. Is that ever for Uh, yeah. That'll be my... I think uh, we need it. a magic noise for your thing. There's a horse noise! What? As <laughs> combat breaks out, your horses are nervous. And the horse <laughs> makes a horse noise. I was about to say, it would be the most calm horse noise ever. <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't look like it on chat space. This is a variety. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, after Sidris is Solaris. Ooh. All right, so I've got this bugbear that slapped me standing in front of me, correct? Yes, and that one has been stabbed in the back. Fair. All right, it needs to make a deception check because I'm going to use Insightful Fighting to look for a soft spot. Poor bugbear. Uh, what kind of check? Deception. <laughs> deception. Yes. Uh, 10 plus something? Uh, I got a 16. You win! Yes. All right, so I get sneak attack if I hit him. So now I'm going to try to stab him with my sword. So, here we go. A little diplomacy in this matter. This is what I'm good at. Oh, maybe not. 13 to hit him. 13 misses the bug. There. All right. So I'm, I'm too busy looking for the soft spot, and I don't actually stab him in it yet, but I'm, I'm ready. Is that it for Solaris? Uh, yep, that's it. Guess what? Now it's my turn. Yeah, I figured. Is that the horse? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the horse noises. It sounds just like mm -hmm. that. Bad guy time. Oh, Solaris. Here we go. Oh, Solaris. Plus four to hit. Eleven damage if they do hit. They have morning stars. They oh. try to womp on you. Okay. Oh, what a free, uh, 21. That hits, right? Sure. What a nine plus four, 13. Does that hit? That will miss. Okay. And I'm going to uncanny dodge the first hit. All right. All right How many so. times can you use that? I can use it as a reaction. So basically it, okay. re it comes back at the start of my turn. Cool. All right. So you take 11 and then the leader guy yells at the lizard folk person says this is your fault and he starts like beating her up hey and then it is yami's turn okay uh you know what as my movement i'm going to uh use my mighty leap to leap over behind this dude who's beating up the lizard folk uh and then i need him to make me a wisdom saving throw as yami like looms up behind him uh, like all shadowy, just her eyes sort of glowing. He has to make what? Uh, wisdom saving throw. Wisdom saving throw. Okay. Yeah. Wisdom save. Here we go. Double check my DC. I hate it when Sirenscape uses Hell's Rebels music for non Hell's Rebels games. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is not Hell's Rebels. Sure, it's not. Plus the 22. Oh, Jesus. H. Uh, yeah, okay. I mean, 18 plus something. Sorry. Yeah, well, that'll, that'll do it. Uh, okay, well, he's still going to take half, I guess. He doesn't just don't get the other effects. Let's see. One, two, three, four. So he's going to take six psychic damage. Okay. Uh, yeah, and that's it. 
He get holds else. his head and screams. He's hurt bad. Blood starts coming out of his nose. Good. Not good. Yeah. And I'll just like loom behind him. Uh, and I use visions of disgust. That's what it was, which causes a creature to regard all other beings as horrid alien entities. Oh. So I just, I just kind of imagine Yami actually looks like her mini there. So she has like tentacle <laughs> hair. Okay. Turning you down a little bit. Meanwhile, in the carts, um, it's the NPC's turn. Follow looks outside, says, "Hey, what's going on?" And the podling goes, "Follow them." And um, <laughs> Pidge is doing like Pidge pigeon, uh, working on a recipe. Uh. Vincent Trench is trying to piece together what's going on here. <laughs> With a <the> magnifying glass. <laughs> He's like over at little cobalt footprints. He's like, and it looks like there was an ambush here. <laughs> Tally the carpenter has noticed that uh, there's a piece of wood not not properly set in the cart and is fixing it. Nim the nimble right, um, is kind of deactivated, just staring into space. <laughs> Avric and Embry, the water and fire genasis who are married, are playfully arguing with one another. Oh. We should help. No, we shouldn't. You never want to help. Oh, you. <laughs> Rishal the page turner is off alone in a corner reading a quite adult novel about. Of course, yes. About uh, vampires. Ooh. Oh. But amongst all of them, Chad Bruski, the keg robot, springs into action. Your bro, fully stocked on alcohol, approaches these two bugbears who had the audacity to try to harm Solaris. And looks like he can't do his spray, but he could do... All right, he's going to go back here and do an acid spray. All right, Chad Bruski. Acid squirt. Plus five to hit, and if it hits, it does seven acid. He backs up. He pulls up his shirt a little bit. Aims his nozzle at the bugbears. They have an AC of 16. I have plus five. That means I need to roll an 11. And he yeah. miss his acid stream goes wide. And then... It is Chris Crash's turn. Okay. Um, that same bugbear is going to get... Right now, Crash, you're over by the cart because you fled. Mm. Yes. That same bugbear, I'm going to shoot a firebolt at it. Uh, Alright, you have to move a little bit because the horse is in the way. Yeah, so I, I would maybe try to use the horse's cover so I like, peek out and shoot. Or something. The horse makes horse noises. That's one of them. <laughs> That's another right, one. That, uh, that is a 24 to hit. 24 hits. Pretty good. Uh, well, good for combat, jeez. Um, seven fire. Seven fire. Okay. The one bugbear is that fire hits it in the chest, and there's like a big bloody wound. It's it's hurt. Rip bud. And then, as a bonus action, my cunning action, I will stealth behind the horse. They, they're playing more Hell's Rebels. I'm turning the music <laughs> on. <How> dare they? <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. What are you doing, Chris? Oh, I was using my um, um, bonus action rogue thing to stealth behind the horse. Stealth back? Okay, got it. And that's it for Chris? Yep. Sidris, you're on the roof. You've given a speech that has given the heroes bonuses. What would you like to do now? Um, I want to go in and help this poor little lizard folk guy. Um, so I'm going to try and get, if I can, get between him and the guys attacking him. I'd like to do that. And then I'll just make a long sword attack at the closest one to him. Okay. Probably the guy that was yelling in his face. So where'd that go? 
Uh, is a 16 going to hit? That's a power score. Yeah, it hits. Sick. All right. So, where are all my dice? Need a D. Oh! Wow! I found my power score noise. <laughs> oh my wow. god. I'm going to play man. that again. Was it loud? It wasn't loud. It was just awesome. All right, ready? Everybody watching this, ready? Power score! <laughs> oh. Okay. We should have more power score as well. <laughs> we we can't hear it unfortunately, but Woo! whatever it is, you should have it play every time you start a show. Woo! Just pump us all up. <laughs> what? I was listening to it. <laughs> okay, that's gonna be seven damage. Seven damage to the bandit guy. Uh huh. What did you hit him with? A long sword. How do you kill him? Oh, I'll say, back, you fiend! Leave this poor, <laughs> innocent lizard alone! I'm gonna whack him with a sword. I'm gonna play the, uh... I wanna play the critical hit. Noise, forget it. Sword critical, there it is. Oh my god, he's dead. He's so dead. <laughs> he's so dead. <laughs> he dies. Zedifer wow. Sidrus? Yes. So basically, Sidrus jumped on a wagon, gave a speech rallying the heroes, jumped off, ran over, and killed the guy. <laughs> yep. Yami's inspired. Solaris. Solaris, there are two bugbears right in front of you. One is bleeding from a firebolt. They hear their leader die. Now they're sharing nervous looks. Uh-oh. What do you yep. do? Uh, look at them both and said, you should have shared those looks when you first started. But you hit me, so... I stab you. All right, I'm gonna try to. All right, so I uh, miss with my short sword. I'm going to use my offhand with my dagger, and say, "Now you're gonna get regret," and I'm gonna stab it with regret. I rolled two ones in a row. Oh, I man. missed one. No. Brutal. The ultimate crit fail. Yes, and Solaris swings and swings. And is like looking down at her weapons, like, what the hell? After Solaris is me. All oh, right, good. these two bugbears, they see that this is just going horribly wrong, and they're outnumbered, and they're going to disengage and run into the forest. Yeah. One, two, three. They're going right to the edge of the map. <sighs> do you let them go, or do you do something? I mean, I'm going to run after the one that's bleeding because he hit me. Oh, you are? Yeah. yeah Yami's not going to pursue, but she is going to point at Sidrus and look down at the dead dude and say, that's a fish. Hmm. That All is right. true. I am a fish person. It's true. After my bad guys, he's Yami. Oh, uh, I'm going to reach down and I'm going to help the lizard folk lady up. Make sure she's all right. Oh. She thanks you profusely. Does she speak common? Yes. Oh. All right. Uh, all right. So Yami's just helping her up. Yep. The NPCs cheer. Yay. Hey, good job. Yay. Yay. Monty Python, the little flags just pop out. And there's a like, yay. <laughs> keg, keg robot will push his groin area forward as he... <gasps> Runs and spews forth acid from his nozzle. Okay. There we go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Spin, spin. It's a, it's a very funny image seeing Solaris run after this bugbear and then Chad, like, with his pelvis thrust forward, shooting just acid out of it. It's yeah. a very Chad. It's a very Chad move. It's he a really, very Chad move. He really yeah. tries to arc it. Yeah, and oh, just yeah. just misses a bugbear just by a little little bit. Solaris <laughs> makes a mental note to help him with target practice. Okay, because she needs to practice too. It seems because she's doing mm -hmm. terrible. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. We'll practice that. Yeah, Chris, it's your turn. He goes over to the dead. It was, the bandit was the guy in the black leather, right? Oh yeah. Okay, Chris is already like pillaging through it, like just Looting. checking what he's got. Looting the guy. 
Got any shinies? Oh, this leather. Oh, leather armor looks like it might be useful. And he's already like using the dagger to like cut off small pieces to patch, make himself patch armor later. You find on the bandit a pouch with coins in it. Do you Ooh. open it? Oh yeah, of course. Twenty-five gold. Whoa, it's pretty good. Okay. After Krish is Sidrus. Uh, I would also like to help this okay. lizard lady out, but I would not like to pursue. All right, so, Solaris, you're chasing these bugbears? I'm chasing the one that slapped me. Uh, the okay. other one can run. I'm chasing yeah. the one that decided to hit me. All right, so That's you catch weird. up to him, and... I'm, ga- I'm going to stab him with my sword, hopefully. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, that's a 15 to hit. Uh, misses. And then uh, with my bonus action, I'm going to attempt to get him with the dagger. Okay. <laughs> I'm mad. Mm. Oh my going. god. <laughs> 10. <laughs> All right. I think she trips on a stick. <laughs> he yells, wow. leave me alone, and just disengages and tries to run more. <laughs> I think I'll, like, dramatically sheath my weapons and turn around, like, (laughs) trying to save face. As the combat ends, the sounds of the forest return. Birds chirping, leaves rustling, lizard folk standing up. (laughs) I'm going to ask lizard folk. Uh, so what was that about? <laughs> this lizard folk looks more like a frog than a... <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> frog person. But they were getting confused with a fish person. What the heck? Oh, his mouth moves. I mean, make sure, you know, make sure everybody gets a good look at this guy. Oh, wow. He's just like... Blah. Blah. <laughs> I love I love that name. Ambient noises to random idle animations. <laughs> Same. Mm-hmm. All right. The lizard folk lady thanks you profusely. Mm-hmm. Of course. And she says, he made a deal with me and then he tried to change it. He altered the deal, I see. Yes. Hmm. What, what was the deal? That bandit originally worked had a deal with my tribe. My tribe grows a nutrient-rich algae that he says is a key ingredient for a potion that lets you breathe in water. So, but after earning our trust, he altered the terms of the deal in stages. First, he offered less money. He said the market was slow. And then he took our algae with a promise to pay later, saying his cash flow was poor. When we began to balk at his arrangement, he threatened to send mercenaries to our home in the Mirror of Dead Men near here. He promised to destroy our tribe unless we worked for free. And that's where you showed up and helped me. All that over some algae. Hmm. Well, hearing about algae that's good for potions of water breathing, I started to look at Fala like, huh? I know she makes potions. Fala? Or they make potions. I always get that wrong. Yes. Oh my god. Somebody they. make a nature or survival check. Uh, I can make nature. Uh, I got a 19 on a nature check. You recognize that this situation could be a prime business opportunity. Ooh. Oh. Heck yeah, I do. She has algae that she's willing to sell for 50 gold, but it's worth oh. 100 gold in Waterdeep. Oh. Do any of you have herbalist or alchemy experience? Uh, no. I don't. No. Nope. Oh. Well, Fala does. <laughs> yeah. Fala yeah, comes out. Fala. Hmm. Fala's the best. As the podling place flute noises, it says, Fala fam. <laughs> Fala goes, you know, hmm. that algae can be mixed with other reagents. Uh, and we could make potions of water breathing. Hmm. Such a potion might fetch up to 500 gold in a city such as Waterdeep. Oh, my God. Wow. 
You're only selling them for like two fifty, Fala? What the heck? <laughs> hey, we got the friends and family discount. Okay, that's that's fair. Okay, yeah. You so, got the tabs discount. <laughs> Fala yeah. begins to Sorry. cut a deal with um, the lizard folk. Solaris will offer to invest with Fala. Okay. So that they uh, don't have to front the cost all on their own. All right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, you were going to enter into a deal with these lizard folk. They're going to provide you with the algae, and you're going to use them to make potions of water breathing. Nice. Put it on my tab. <laughs> nice. Uh, I Yami just kind of looks on at Fala doing business uh, very happily since they've been down for a couple months now. It's good seeing them doing what they do best. Mm. The podling looks at you and says, Eastai Kakira! That's right, my little friend. And I put my hand around the podling and pat him on the shoulder. He goes, Yen Selenge! <laughs> I'll cast Comprehend Languages again. Oh, no! <laughs> he says, I already forget what all of them are. <laughs> just like, that, it's just like death to all humans. It's, <laughs> this deal... That's this this deal will be most lucrative. Oh, wow. Got a mind for business. Definitely so. I shall now commence. Like really knows its stuff. I shall now commence in the good deal song. <laughs> <laughs> he says the same song for every situation. <laughs> he he does not say. Maybe we can screw them over in the deal like that guy was trying to do. He does not say that. I Yami's not thinking that either. You know. <laughs> You know, I don't want I don't want you to leave the lizard folk because I really don't want to leave this face on the screen. I really like this. <laughs> um, and all right, so you made the deal. Her name is Thetsis. She thanks you, and she's gonna head back to the mirror of dead men to tell her tribe the good news. Okay. She does pause and wonder if you're gonna give her an advance payment. Uh, Solaris will. She brought yeah. some uh, spending money with her, so I'd give her a uh, hundred gold pieces to to start the deal. That's enough for two algaes. Okay. Do we want to do more? I have more. I brought I brought about 550 gold pieces with me for the journey. Wait, if we buy algae here, it's worth more and can get more shiny? Yes. Uh, Krish buys four. Because that's as many as they can afford. They, they have to go farm the algae so they don't have it now. You're paying in advance. So you'll have to, somebody's going to have to come get it. That's all right. We'll oh. Krish uh... <laughs> just pulls out this bag of gold. And then he realizes that, and he puts it away. <laughs> so I'll I'll have I'll give them two hundred and fifty gold pieces as a as an initial investment. Okay. okay. All right. Two hundred and fifty gold. Man, glad I brought some gold for the road. Yeah. Algae. Two hundred and fifty GP. See, you never know when a good business opportunity is going to come up. You've got to be prepared. Also, I just realized that Christian has most of his gold back at home. Can I? Does this does this guy have any like uh like the bandit dude? Does he have any like identifying marks on him? Well, why don't you make an investigation? Sure. Uh, let's see. I got a nineteen. He's got a tattoo of a winged snake. Of course he does. Okay, mm. excellent. That's what I figured with the black leather and all. Okay. All right, interesting. Uh, by the way, Texas, you might want to like dump this body somewhere in the swamp so it dissolves and no one finds it. I mean, just you know, that's just just shrugs. <laughs> or you can eat it. You could. That's true. You could eat it. That's just shrugs. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, the people, the tabs people in your carts are like, all right, come on, let's move on. We're making a business deal. Hold on. Yeah, yeah come on. All right. Oh, now it's It's a good deal for all of us. Like, when are we getting the Fandal in? <laughs> right, none of that, or I'll turn this cart around and go home. <laughs> this is taking forever. So is the mom of the front. Are we there yet? <laughs> I got to pee, guys. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Goodbye to the Lizard Folk Mini. Bye. Perhaps we'll Bye. see you again one day. All right. Are you going to continue on? Yeah. All right. 
This, tra- this journey takes several days, so... Mm, okay. You do anything special when you camp or anything like that? No, just, I mean, the usual, like, setting watches on the road because of, you know, it's just... You didn't, you didn't want to do target practice with the... Uh, well, oh, uh, yes, the like, yeah. Solaris would set up, like, random, you know, like, targets and have our friend Chet, like, be like, okay, now you're going to have to hit these, and I want you to do this in quick succession. And everyone you miss, you have to do it again. And I'd make him practice shooting so that next time we get into a fight, he's he's ready. He's more like prepared. He, his, his aim might be a little off because he did get pretty messed up and we had to fix him. So this is also a chance for her to tinker and make sure that everything's working right. Okay. All right. And I know we pointed this out before, but if you look at Chad, who's right next to me. <laughs> The I'm nozzle. To go there, Sean. So you're saying that you're tinkering with the nozzle. <laughs> Just, I mean, whatever. Okay. No, it's not my fault. That's the artwork. So what? What? How, what's the target? Like, I assume the targets will be successively more difficult. So like AC, ten, fifteen, twenty, something. Yeah. Like that. The first target's like the side of a wall of a tavern outside. <laughs> well, you're you're in the woods. So yeah, these are like rocks and trees and like. The last target's like a tiny little sapling. It's like you have to hit it right there. All right, so you go hit that rock. And he aims himself. Acid squirt plus five. And he's he's AC 10 for the rock. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Boom. Hits the rock. It sizzles. Nice. All right, he stops. There's a little drippage, but just for a second. Now you're going to do a tree? Mm-hmm. And he aims at the tree. AC 15. 14 plus 5. He hits it with a 19. There nice. you go. He hits a tree. There's a squirrel in a knot hole that pops out angrily, like chitters at you. And now you're going to do a sapling? Yeah. There we go. Misses the sapling. Ooh. All right. We got to work on that. Like. Okay. Long range, small target. Mm. Yeah. All right, and uh, and when you camp, you know, you make a big fire, and everybody eats food, and probably baked goods. Yeah. Yeah. I will hand out some baked goods mm. from my oh, good yes. friend Pidge. Yes. <laughs> uh-huh. Yami just basks in it because she loves she loves Pidge's baked goods. And the podling helps serve everybody and plays flute music and. Oh. Dances around, has a fork and a knife, stomping on a log. You know. <laughs> All right. They were very helpful. That of them. Oh, <laughs> oh no. Also. <laughs> okay. Uh, Avo V. Uh, Applebee's, yeah. Applebee's. <laughs> <laughs> dinner for two. Dinner for two. <laughs> okay. Five dollar app. <laughs> we should hire him. <laughs> oh my god, an, an Applebee's just filled with podling servants. <laughs> oh, wow, I go there. Dang. All right. You uh continue on? Yeah. So you travel for a day or two. And then there's another encounter on the road. Oh. So you turn east from the high road onto the Tribor Trail. (gasps) And at that point, your travel slows a bit. The high road is frequently traveled by caravans and is better kept and easier to traverse. The Mm. Tribor Trail, on the other hand, sees less frequent traffic and is less well-maintained. After a few hours travel east, you come upon the following scene. Uh Uh-oh. That's good. See what this guy looks like. There he is. Okay. Get real close to his face. Okay. Sitting cross-legged in the middle of the road is an odd-looking figure wearing not a stitch of clothing. In one hand, he fiddles with a copper medallion etched with the image of a thin, tangled piece of pair of antlers. He might be a beardless dwarf, or a short and pale half-orc, or a human with a gland condition. 
Either way, he doesn't look up as he speaks in a voice that sounds like a goat choking on sawdust. I'm not, I can't do that voice. <laughs> I'll say that's so a goat choking. Specific. A goat yeah. choking on sawdust. Oh, oh, All right. <laughs> I don't know. Fortune has strange and wonderful and terrible things in store for you. So I am here as fortune's lackey. Fair or foul, weal or woe, chant or howl, friend or foe. <laughs> Raspy. <laughs> or or pay the toe? That, that sounds good, question mark. Friend? Hopefully. I look around at everybody. He chuckles. Uh, that remains to be seen. Okay. I can assure you there are only friends here. There's crash sheets this thing. Can I get out of the cart and yeah. like pick up this naked dude and just what? like move him out of the road? Are you gonna touch him? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Alright, as you reach for him, he flinches back. Do you still grab him? Yeah, I'll grab him. Oh, Yami! I when, have no fear. when Yami when Yami jumps out the wagon like that, uh, Chris does scurry out and is your shadow. What's gonna happen? I'm gonna turn green again. <laughs> we are going to have to have a talk about y'all touching. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna agree. Like I agree with Sidris on this one. He's a naked man. He as you pick him up and carry him to the side of the road, he mm. speaks. Mm. All right, and I have the text of what he says. It's gonna be on the screen here. Oh lord. Oh no. I just imagine he goes like bored stiff and is like talking as Yami is carrying him off to the side of the road. I hope he's not bored stiff. Not... <laughs> he says, <laughs> I stand aloof, alone as a savior. I shine my oily smile across the rippling vastness. I, with this beaming, attract and repel. Ignore me and you are lost one way or another. What am I? Oh, a riddle. Oh, I didn't realize that was a riddle. I thought you were just saying things. Uh, <laughs> repeat. <laughs> it's on the screen. The text. Oh, what, what page is it on? I can put it in the Zoom chat. Stand aloof, alone as a savior. I shine my oily smile Don't look in the book. <laughs> Don't look at the adventure. We're playing the adventure. Don't. I know. Look at it. Just for the riddle. Oh, I'll type it in. Okay, thank you. I can read it again. I, yes, stand, yes, I stand aloof, alone as a savior. I shine my oily smile across the rippling vastness. I, with this beaming, attract and repel. Ignore me, and you are lost one way or another. What am I? The sun? Let's see here. I was thinking of the sun or just like star in general. Alone as a savior. He like, when you say the sun, he kind of cackles and he looks at Kuriyami and he kind of groans and drools a little bit. Okay. Solaris? Solaris? Mom says the moon. He says, it's too late. And oh, no. I just want to know if I'm right. Yami, you Moving. feel like something wash over you. Uh -oh. oh, no. Yeah. Gross. That's not a good noise for that. I just drop him. Oh, here's... <laughs> okay. You hear a noise. You're, you, you have feeling washes over you. Yami? The feeling has washed over me. Yami, you are cursed. Okay. How so? Just in general? Wait, Yami is cursed? Chris answered that though. Yeah, but she was holding the guy. Yeah. Chris mm. Crash, this is why we discuss the answers before we give them. You have disadvantage <laughs> on saving throws. Oh, whatever. You have the option of passing this curse to somebody else. Ooh. Choose a living oh. human, choose a living humanoid within five feet once per day. You have to make an opposed charisma check. Huh. Oh, jeez. So, okay. Coincidentally, within five win, feet behind you. If you win, 
the curse uh, passes to somebody else. If you fail, then bad things happen to you. Oh, interesting. Okay. He says, oh, by all means, don't let me block your path. <laughs> Solaris, Solaris is like, was I right? <laughs> You'll never know. <laughs> That's not fair. Solaris stamps her feet. She's like, Chris, Crash, we discuss riddle answers before we give them from now on. It's actually a good point. I didn't think about the moon. I guess that does How tell it you- work. Solaris just stops and looks at Yami. With a frustrated glance, and then looks back and sits there on the part. Is there any physical version of this curse? Like, did anything happen visually to Yami? No, Yami just got a feeling. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, Goosebumps. No General malaise of misfortune. Hi, Polar Knights. Thank you for the follow. Ooh. Chum. Hey. Uh, Krish behind you is just like, old man, not worth your time. Yami, you, no. have the, you have the option of passing the curse to Polar Knights. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, you don't. I'll just, I'll just pat Chris Crash on the head. I'm gonna be like, yes, he's not worth my time. You're right. right. Christmas Day? No, no, we'll pass okay. Chris. I like Chris. No. Oh, okay. Solaris walks over and gives the guy a cookie and some food and says, "You should be nicer to people who said they want to be a friend." And walks back to the cart and climbs in. He takes your cookie, he throws it into the forest, and he goes, "Fit." <sighs> Enjoy your curse. Weird <laughs> <laughs> naked men in the woods. I knew you weren't gonna get the answer. This man is very rude. We should move on. Yeah. Uh, the curse of Bashaba. <laughs> yeah, Bashaba, Bushaba. Screw you. You all suck at riddles. <laughs> wow, you're quite the. Yeah, I'm going to walk away. Solaris. I didn't take riddling in college, okay? <laughs> Solaris, Chad yeah. Bruski looks at you and looks mm-hmm. at the old guy and looks at you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Chad is going to try to spew acid. <laughs> his oh, nozzle. God. Oh, no. Nice. You guys moved around all of a sudden. Yeah, uh... I think if Dylan turns off his camera, they'll move back. Oh, oh sorry. He turns it off re- and turns it back on. I had to reset my camera. It was oh, okay. Weird. I'll move you. Only take okay. a second. All right. Let's see here. Krish Crash becomes Yami to take the curse from Yami. I'm just saying Chris would be willing. I'm not sure if you'd still need to make a saving throw or not. Mm. <sighs> I want to know. Well, I'm just... okay. Okay. Oh. Chad is going to try to spray acid in a long stream on this, uh-huh. this crazed man. Aim for a sapling. <gasps> he hits! The man oh. screams! Ah! And he runs into the forest. Oh, shoot. Nice shot! Um, Solaris, Chad reaches out to give you a fist bump. Oh, definite, definite fist bump there. I go, I go and retrieve the cookie the guy threw away too. Please do, okay. yeah. Have All like right. ants on it. <laughs> Still good. <laughs> Who's got pressed the digitation? Not me. <laughs> no, not, not me. What is that? I have no idea. I've heard about it. It's supposed to clean things really good. Hmm. Why clean things? Shiny. Why clean things? There's now a new flavor on it. I hand it to Chris Crash. Here, have it. He just eats it, crunching the ants. Okay. Do you continue kind of on idea. the Tribor Trail? Yeah. Yes. There we go. Is it like a is it like a dirt road as opposed to the high road? That's how I'm picturing it. Talk louder, says Polar Knights. I can. Talk louder. Ah, there. That should be the bar says I'm loud. Okay. <laughs> <sighs> All right, you're going to continue on? Yeah. You move off the Tribor Trail and onto the even less used track to Fandalin. Oh my God. Ahead on the rough road, a pair of dead horses and an overturned cart block your way. 
Sacks and barrels spilled from the cart litter the ground. Trees grow close to the road here, and the thick undergrowth obscures the view beyond. You see two dead horses lying in the road up ahead. What the heck? Oh, um... How bad do they look dead-wise? Like, can I roll medicine? See how long they've been dead, or...? You're gonna go check them out? Well, I mean, the cart's moving, so Chris wouldn't just... Well, the cart stopped. The, the horses are freaked out. They stop. They don't want to get closer to the dead horses. So oh, you're about your carts are about 15 feet away. Then Chris would scurry off the cart and very cautiously move towards them. Okay. So you move close to them, hmm. and you can make... Uh, they have rotting flesh that's falling off. Ew. And each horse bears scars on its side that forms the image of a draconic skull with a sword driven up through it from the bottom. The hell? You can make an arcana check if you want. Uh, okay. I like to think um, I would figure out how rotted right they are immediately because I would have mage hand poked them. Would have been, when yeah. you poke them, oh. no. horrible things happen. Why, Crash Crash? No. <laughs> He's 30 feet away, if that helps. Mm -hmm. On either You're side really of the road. I have to have a talk about you guys touching things. <laughs> it doesn't help, Citrus. It doesn't help. <laughs> On either side of the road. It was 11 Arcana if that did anything. There are goblins. I Gob knew it! Many, many Oh no. Goblins. There are many yeah. goblins. Oh my god, it's a lot of goblins, yeah. There's 15 of them. 15? Oh my That's goodness. A... We dealt with like 15 goblins in Under Mountain. It's no big deal. We dealt with like half that. No, there were six that we that survived. Don't poo-poo my goblins. <laughs> <laughs> She'd be going, oh my god, we're all going to die. Yeah. Sean, scale this gonna down. going to die. You scale this down? No, you should say that. Sean, you okay. should. Okay. You should... <laughs> okay. I scaled it up. Oh. Okay. Because, oh. I mean, you're higher level. Yeah. 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 Are. Hmm. All right. So, I think what I'm going to do here is I'll have a bunch of them sh shoot at Krish. And then the rest are just going to fire. The rest of you are in the, the wagons. Yeah. So, they're just going to shoot at your wagons, I guess. And maybe a horse! <gasps> no! You're gonna no. kill your horses! Have oh, we killed yeah. enough horses? <laughs> Apparently not. No more horse violence! Mm -hmm. Alright, so let's see. That's why the horse revolution happened. Mm -hmm. Krish. <laughs> so we'll do seven on Krish. Okay, my AC is 16, if that helps, since you're rolling something. Seven. I have plus four to hit. Luckily, I cast Mage Armor every morning. Alright. Uh, now I'm gonna make some more d20s here. Oh yeah, you can roll them all at once and deal with simulator. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to select them, and then I will triple roll them all at once. Oh my goodness. And I got a plus uh. Four, and your AC was a what? Oh my was god. Like 16, so I think 12 or higher to hit me. All but one hit you. Okay. So. Oh, oh pincushion crush crash. Six yep. bolts hit you for a total of 30 points of damage. Oh, <laughs> Just, yeah, I'm. There's, just a, uh, there's definitely a huge screen. Then, a bunch of bolts land in the lead horse, and it squeals and dies. No! Not Jerry. I'm trying to knock it over. He won't fall, though. <laughs> He's dead, though. Wow, it's like a real horse. Sleep standing up. My oh. friend George badmouths horses all the time. He, uh... <laughs> Why? His, his, girl, his girlfriend rides horses, and so oh. he goes to help sometimes, and he just says they're so lazy and they don't do anything. And, like, they're done after five minutes of, of like, work, you know? 
All right. All right, they killed the horse. Uh, now we have our initiative order because we already rolled it. I, I'll play battle sounds, but I'm not playing battle music because I can't believe they would use Hal's Rebel. <laughs> right. uh, okay, so uh, they shoot a bunch of bow uh, crossbows into Krish, who takes 30 damage. And then more go into the horse. It makes a horse noise. Critical. Ooh. Oh, and the horse is down. It's <laughs> full of bolts. It's dead. Chris, no! it's your turn. You are right there. There's goblins on either side of you. What do you do? Wait, who? Chris. Oh, uh, yeah. Scurrying back into the... Well, I should say limping back to the wagon. Okay. Are you going in the wagon? If I can, yeah. As a bonus action, I'm going to try to use it as cover. Okay. You go into the wagon. All right. I think that's just a movement. You want to do anything else? Uh, yes. Yes, I do. I will cast Cure Wounds on myself at second level, because, ow. Oh, I'll make a noise for that. Healing spell. Mm -hmm. How much did you heal for? Uh, nine total. Nine total. Is that it for Chris? Oh yeah, that's done. Sidris. So our horse is dead now? One of the two horses is dead, yeah. But we're not gonna go anywhere with one horse dead and... <laughs> oh, on, I guess. oh no. Okay. Um. Alright. I am going to... How far away? Oh, okay, cool. Um, I want to look at one of the one of the goblins specifically, like one like in the middle of uh -huh. the the little miniature horde of goblins, and I want to cast uh, enemies abound. Uh -huh. So I want to reach into the mind of this goblin, uh -huh. um, and I want to force it to do an intelligence saving throw. Intelligence save. All right, let's zoom in on my D20. Intelligence, here we go. Five. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, does not make it. <laughs> okay. Uh, so he loses the ability to distinguish friend from foe regarding all creatures it can see as enemies until the spell ends. And each time the target takes damage, it can repeat the saving throw, ending the effect on itself on its success. Uh, whenever the affected creature chooses another creature as a target, it must choose the target at random from among the creatures it can see within range of the attack, spell, or other ability it's using. If an enemy provokes an uh, opportunity attack from the affected creature, the creature must make that attack if it is able to. Okay. Is that it for Sidrus? Yes. After Sidrus is Solaris. Um, so I'm going to go after, I guess, the group on the other side of the road from where Sidrus is handling stuff. Okay. Uh, can I get to one of them with a 30 foot movement? Yeah, there's one, two, three, four, five, six goblins in a clump. All right. As I'm running over there, I'm going to make a insight check. So I need a deception check because I want to see where the squishy part is on this goblin. Deception. All right, let's see here. Seven? I got a dirty 20. So I run up with diplomacy, and I'm going to attempt to stab the first goblin I reach. Uh, ooh, that's a 25 to hit. Yeah, Solaris is back. 25 hits the goblin. All uh, right, so I will roll. That's going to be 20 points of damage, piercing damage. 20 points. You kill mm -hmm. him. How do you kill him? Uh, I think she just runs forward, and she uses her momentum to just shove the blade right through his sternum. Looking at the other goblins as she does, she like pulls it out as he drops and goes, Next. And that's my turn. And it's great because when it comes out the other side of him, it's glowing with moonlight. Sk. 
Nice. All right. That's it for Solaris. That is her turn. My turn. Oh, boy. Here we go. The rest of them. One, two, three, four, five of them train their crossbows on you. Awesome. Now roll them all at once. Here we go. If you've got a plus four, you're looking for an 11 or better to hit me. I have a plus four, and they all miss you. All right. You just, Solaris stabs him, and, and then as his body's dropping and they aim the crossbows, I like to think she, like, catches the body and holds it in front of her, and then tosses it aside. <laughs> all right. On the other side, now, um, Sidris, you cast a spell on that one. Mm -hmm. So he thinks everybody's a monster or something? He thinks everyone is an enemy. So he'll attack that. Oops, I rolled my own thing. Yeah, so he's got to choose his target at random. So it can be one of us or it can be one of his friends around him, whoever's in range of him. Yeah, I love that some of them are standing on their heads. <laughs> yeah, I got to flip them all. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. All right. He it attacks one of his allies. Is that a 10? It's a 10 plus 4, which misses his ally. The rest of them. Well, I would suppose the ally would actually swing back. They're goblins, right? Yeah. It gets mad. It stabs its friend, who takes five damage and is mortally wounded. Ooh. The he others. Now, if he takes damage, then he can uh, try and do the saving throw again. All right. Takes Intelligence, off. was it? Yeah. All right. Uh-oh. Some noise just happened. Uh, 13? Nope. Okay. The rest of them train their crossbows on the other horse. Pew, 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 no! pew, 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 no! And they kill your other horse. Oh, my God. What the heck? We have a four dead horse situation here. Damn it. <laughs> then it is Yammy's turn. Okay. Uh, question. How many would I be able to fit within a 60 foot long, 15 foot high, one foot thick wall? Theoretically. Theoretically. You get this whole chunk on the side. Okay, uh, I'm going to do that then. Uh, as How wide is it? Uh, it's one foot thick, 60 feet long. So One foot thick? Yeah. Oh, oh so it would just be a, it's a straight line then. It's yeah, a 15 basically. foot tall wall, and it goes 60 feet out, and it's a yes. foot thick? Okay. Yeah. And it's, it's like, not one of those ones where it's like 10 foot segment. It looks like segment. three. Oh, oh that's, is that it? Dang, all right. Well, that's yeah. okay. Yami will go clap in front of her, uh, and I need all of them to make me strength saving throws. Okay, I'm making the wall. <laughs> there it is. Got him, sort of. Strength saves. All right. All right, here we go. Whoops. All right, R. Strength save number one, a nine. Less than Fail. Nine. How about a ten? That also fails. Okay. Fourteen. So that's also a fail. Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, it has a bunch of things, and it's concentration. So I'm keeping the wall there. Uh -huh. uh, so every foot that they move through the wall costs one extra foot of movement. Uh -huh. um, when a creature moves into the wall space for the first time or they start their turn there, they have to succeed on a strength saving throw, or they're going to take uh, 66 thunder damage. They're pushed oh. in a straight line <laughs> up to 30 feet away from the wall and uh -huh. are knocked prone. All right, they're dead. I mean, they have seven so, hit points. Oh, yeah, I did more than that one. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Like, what is the, like, what is this, this? Is it water? Is it wind? Oh, it's thunder. So I just imagine, like, the uh, the air is just, like, The sound shaking. wall. Yeah. Yeah, because it's hear, like you're like clapping, like yeah. a oh, force yeah. field of thunder forward. That's cool. Oh yeah, and uh, I can concentrate on it up to ten minutes, so I'm just gonna hold concentration on it. You can concentrate on it. Okay. Yeah. So if anybody moves into it, they gotta make a strength save. Oh, I better put it back now. Right? All right. So attacks can go through it. Yeah, I think so. It doesn't say that uh, it stops range attacks or anything. It. it just slows movement and can blast you back. Mm -hmm. 
All right. Is that it for Yami? Yep. NPC time. Uh, Keg Robot, a.k.a. Chad Brewski, comes over to where Solaris is because he has a power that could be really useful over here. One of his things is Beer Shower. 15-foot cone or a 30-foot line. So, uh, oh, he'll do the hot oil spray. 15-foot cone. They have to make DC 13 deck saves or take 7 fire. They have 7 hit points. So if they fail, they die. So he walks over. Solaris. 15 feet. That's 3 squares. He's going to hit all but 1. You oh. must die. So let's see here. It burns. Four of them. Hot oil. Here we go. One. One made it. So, he walks over, opens his nozzle, hot oil, goblins scream, three of them die. So, on Solaris' side, there's only two goblins left. All right. And that was uh, NPCs. Now it is Krish's turn. Um, you're in the so. cart. I'm in the cart hiding. Maybe like half the arrows poked out of me, maybe. Um, he's fresh. probably freaking out, so he's probably going to kind of secure wounds on himself again at a lower level. And that's all he's going to do. He's just going to stay in the cart. He thinks he's going to die, so self-preservation oh, kicked in. Krish, Krish. He only heals three, but that's his turn. All right. After Krish is Sidris. So how many of these guys we got left? Um, on one side, there are two. And on the other, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, gosh. Sorry. Seven. Oof. Ooh. Not very long. There's a lot. A lot on that one side. Um, I guess... I will just go over to that one side and start whacking them with my long sword. The one where there's a lot of them or the other one? The one where there's a lot of them. So you're going to go right next to um, the wall of thunder thing. Yeah, I'm going to skillfully avoid it if I can. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And let's see. Ooh, that's real good. So there's a 22 hit, I assume. Yes. Okay. Then let's get some damage. That's going to be another seven damage. How do you kill it? So skillfully avoiding this wall of thunderclaps, I'm going to like wait for a, a clap to go through, reach through and whack it, and then aim my sights on the next one. <laughs> All right. It's like a rhythm game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Solaris, you're on the Hello. other side where there are two left. And Chad Brewski is right next to you. All right. Uh, is We're not next to either one of them, though, right? No. All right. Well, I'm... Chad is next to one. All right. I'm going to move next to the one that Chad is next to. Okay. And I'm going to attempt to stab it with diplomacy. All right. So I just sort of... Uh, as I let the other like body that's full of crossbow bolts kind of drop, I sort of spin and try to stab him. Uh, ooh, that is a 25 to hit. That hits. All right. And he will take 19 points of piercing damage. How do you kill him? Um, so that one, I just like stab through the big, through his mouth. And then how close is the next one? Uh, five feet away. All right, I'm going to sort of continue like my motion and spin, and I've got my dagger in my offhand. I'm going to try to just stab it with my dagger. All right. So this is with regret. Uh, that is a 23 to hit. 23 hits. How much right. damage? And that's my offhand, so I just do the dice value. So that's going to be four points of piercing damage. All right, he's still alive. All right, I, I kind of stab him like in the shoulder and then pull the dagger back out. And like I'm standing there with both blades looking at him, just smiling. All right. And it is my turn. So uh, Solaris 
Mm-hmm. Keg Robot came over, scorched, killed three of them. You stabbed one, ran over, and stabbed another. And the one that you're fighting is the only one left. He's going to kind of panic and swing at you mm. fearfully. Uh, where's my gray? I'll just use this red guy here. All right. Ooh, we got an 18 plus 4. 22! That'll hit me. He frantically swings at you and does 5 damage to you. I will uncanny dodge, so I take 2. Okay. Now, there's one on the far side of Yami's Wall of Thunder. And he's seen enough. And he's just getting out of there. He just runs into the woods. Um... I would do if there were fifteen if there are fourteen other allies and they're all dead two rounds. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The other goblins shriek at each other at each other and they're backing away and they're gonna fire bolts as they back away. And that mm. means poor Sidrus. One, two, oh, three, no, Sidrus. four, five. It's gonna take five shots. Here we go. Ouch. But they're ta- tactically retreating. Oh, yeah. Where did my dice go? I, I think I accidentally deleted them. <laughs> I'm roll all at once. Here we go. All right. Oh, God. Okay, wait a minute. That's a uh, nine. I use 11, so you've got a 11. good chance Uh-oh. of hitting. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so it looks like Two hit you normally, so three bolts strike you, and two whiz by you. So you're hit, two of them do a total of ten, and then there's one that's actually a critical. And, uh, goblin. Look real quick. Alright, so that's, uh, it's gonna be 2d6 plus two. Let's grab these for here. Alright. 2d6 plus 2. 7, so 9 from the last one. Ouch. So that's... Alright. And then they're... Uh, Oh no, I've done something horrible. Mm. There we go. <laughs> I, I resized my screen. Alright, and then the goblins are just take, taking their speed, moving right to the edge of the map. They're trying to get out of there. So they're holding their crossbows, backing away, shooting and retreating, and mm. gibbering at each other in panic tones. And then it is Yami's turn. Question, are they still within 40 feet of the wall? Five. Of the wall, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, then I'm going to spend two side points to create a whirlwind, which is a 20-foot radius sphere. Uh, and I need all of them to make strength saving throws. Strength saves. Awesome. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, I need the hurricane. Mm, all right. Oh, yeah. Let's see here. One got a 20. Oh, gosh. The, yeah, the, ne- the next highest is an 11. That's... Not gonna make it. Yeah, that's a fail. All right. So what happens? Uh, well, uh, they take one d6 bludgeoning damage from the wind, and then they are moved to an unoccupied space of my choice in the sphere. And I'm gonna throw them into the wall of thunder. <laughs> all right. They all die, even the one who failed to save. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Excellent. All right. So you slide them all into your wall, and they are yeah. all just utterly they're all just picked up by the wind and just flung into this wall of thunder. Utterly destroyed. <sighs> and then goblin bodies rain down around us. As the goblins are defeated, uh, forest noises return. Your horses are dead. Yeah. Uh-huh. There's a lot of dead goblins. Shucks. And then there's just those two weird dead horses in the middle of the road that uh, Chris was in the middle of examining when the goblins ambushed you. Huh. Well. Does anyone else think that they'll be at some point and they just keep them and slide them into the road when they want to ambush travelers and then slide awesome. them back into the brush when they're done? Possible. Ugh. 
very good possibility. Goblins. Crush crash? Crush crash. I look around for crush crash. I run to the wagon and like pull myself up to see where crush crash is. Like he's, he's hiding underneath one of the seats. There's clear amount of blood from because he was almost dead. So yeah. there's a clear blood trail going right where he was. And um, you see him casting cure wounds on himself over and over again. Oh. And you, he's talking in Draconic. I understand Draconic. Draconic. What are you saying? Can't die, can't die, can't die over and over and over. I say in Draconic, not, you're not going to die. You're not going to die. I, I try to just help him. Like, as he's healing himself, I ha- try to help with the arrows and stuff. And like, Crush Crush, it's okay. He's okay. just he's just like a shivering little panic. Crush Crush, you, we're gonna patch you up and then you're gonna go and loot their stupid little corpses, okay? <laughs> yeah. He just he just shakes his head and he gets further in, under the seat. No, it's okay. Like you're gonna show show them that they they're just evil little scared. They're chickens. They did they fought they that was unfair. They're just little chickens and we killed them. Yami threw them into a wall of thunder. Did you hear the big booms? That was Yami. You know what? I'm gonna roll something for that. Crush, crush. No, no, me safe here. I'm gonna just sit with him. I'm not gonna make him come out. I'm gonna sit with him and just help him just clean up. And I pull my cloak off and I wrap it around Crush, crash. And I'm like, you're gonna be fine. You're gonna be fine. Well, you're, you're our brave dragon leader. Don't forget. So that's probably where Chris is going to stay <laughs> for at least the rest of the day. Okay. Well, with our horses dead, uh, I think I don't even know what to do with the other cart. Yeah, I, I think like, we have too many people for one cart. Yeah. How far do we think we are from the town? You're close. We're close. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we could close. huff it. I hate to well, leave wagons, but Yami can pull a wagon <laughs> pretty easily. That's that's. I mean, I, I, can, I can only really pull one at a time. That's the thing. How many miles? Because I know a wagon can travel like ten plus miles a day. Or something. You're off the Tribor Trail, and there was a sign. It was like two miles, and you're you're oh. within, you're probably about a mile away from Van Dalen. Well, shoot. In that case, Yami could just pull the carts the rest of the way. Like, I could do one, and I could come back and get the other one. Well, we could take anything important, put it in the cart you want to pull. Everybody else can walk and stretch their legs and get their cardio in. And we'll just push the other wagon into the trees and hide it. And then if we... We can always pay someone in town to come back with a horse and get it. That's a good point. Okay. I could offer you some help with that, Yami. Oh, all right, sure. I would like to cast... Bull's strength and enhanceability upon oh. my good friend Yami to oh double your carrying capacity. Holy, oh my god. <laughs> she if I, up the wagon. <laughs> I could, yeah. I totally could. Holy crap. If I, if I assumed ogre form, I could just like probably lift both wagons. I'm so fucking strong. <laughs> crap. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just like pick up the wagon like a rickshaw and just like run with it. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Holy crap. Who all was hurt? I, I took two points of damage. Fine. Citrus took a bit. Yeah. I took 19 points of damage. Oh I am quite hurt. None of the NPCs took anything, right? Besides the horses. No. Nope. Okay. Um, after 10 minutes from that initial cooldown from the combat. Um, everyone who's hurt heals 11, as I had cast Prayer of Healing. It took 10 minutes. Oh, Thank you, Krish Crash. He's still underneath the seat the whole time. Why, thank you, new small friend. Hey guys, look at this! And Yami just picks up one of the dead horses and, like, walks around with it and then throws it. <laughs> wow. That is kind of gross. Can Solaris go loot the goblin corpses? Maybe maybe Yami should stop horsing around. Mm, Yami's a fan of horseplay, though. Uh-huh. She, she actually instigated the horse revolt. 
That's true. Oh, yeah. Sean, do the goblins have anything interesting on them? I'm just going to go body to body and just collect up. The goblins. The goblins. The goblins. Let's see. Treasure. Goblins, no. But amongst those two dead horses, there was, uh, looks like, crates, sacks, and barrels that were mostly looted. But you find one cask of Luskin ice mead. Ooh. That's good. That's the good stuff. And, you know, you run a bar, so you know that that's, that's worth at least 50 gold. And you're pretty sure that you could sell it for 200 in Waterdeep. Wow. Saving that. <laughs> and as far as the horses, uh, somebody can make an Arcana check. I know Chris was in the middle of doing that when the ambush started. Yeah, he got an 11. I'm not sure. If okay. Asked, so you recognize this sigil as part of a unique necromantic ritual that can turn any creature into an undead creature when it dies. Ew. And you also know that there were scars on each of the horses that formed the image of a draconic skull with a sword driven up through it from the bottom. Hmm. Draconic skull. Do we have any idea what that insignia is from? No, you've never seen it before. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. We might want to look into that ritual sometime. That sounds cool. (laughs) Very weird. Uh, Solaris just kind of in a book she's got with her, like rough sketches that symbol just to remember it. Just... No, no, Yami, hold it. Th- no, hold it this way. Oh. I need to look. At- okay, good. I-, I just want to get the sword right. Okay. Oh. Mm-hmm. Nope, nope. Oh. Okay, no. don't, don't. Okay, great. I'm done. Okay. <laughs> Whoa. Just like slams against a tree. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. Now it's in like four pieces, Ooh. Yami. Ooh. Better for the forest animals, you know. Ooh. I grew up in the forest. I know what they want. <laughs> Okay, so you're going to pull the carts to uh, Fandalen? Yeah. On the screen is a map of Fandalen. Mm -hmm. uh, You're coming from the north section. So you're going to pass by some houses. And I'm going to read you some... Oh, I should turn on the town noises. There we go. All right. This modest-sized town is comprised of some 50 buildings, most of which show signs of regular upkeep. Farms and an apple orchard mark the outer edge of town, with houses and shops closer in. Townsfolk are milling about in the central square and on the adjacent green. Two people stand on a stage on the green, addressing the crowd, but the distance to them, along with a steady chorus of cheers, boos, and shouts, obscures what is being said. Rising from a small hill overlooking the town is an old manor house, or at least it was an old manor house. Most of its walls have collapsed in what appears to be a recent disaster, with traces of smoke still rising from piles of tumbled stone. Hmm. Very recent. Well. Seeing the stage, I know where Yami wants to go. (laughs) What do you think is going on over there? I don't know, but uh, maybe we should find out. I mean, sure. We got to get the lay of the land anyway. Set everybody up with a place to stay. So might as well know where the most town people are. There's a crowd right there. We could just set up. Networking (laughs) opportunity. Definitely. Exactly. So you, uh, are you pulling your card in or are you? Yeah, probably. (laughs) <laughs> you, you yeah! attention with a giant green Yami pulling two cards over her shoulder. <laughs> yes. The whole, Wait, yeah, yes. Point. Yami, you're from the Far East, right? Yeah, I am. Yeah. This is probably not too odd for you then. No. There are a lot of man-driven carts. Exactly. All right. So probably pull... smaller than this, but. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> you pull it into the center of town. As you approach the stage, 
A well-dressed male human on the stage points unexpectedly at your group and shouts, You see? This is exactly what I mean. Just when things start to calm down in Fandalin, more murderous vagrants show up. They probably have something to do with what's happened to Tresendar Manor and with the livestock that have started to go missing. It's only a matter of time before this all ends in misery and bloodshed. I promise you! And some, a lot of the townsfolk gathered around the stage turn and look at you and gasp. Hi! Bitch works. Get your bitch works here. <laughs> I think Yami's gonna mighty leap onto the stage. <laughs> Probably. Oh. Alright. And... With the cart? No, I'm gonna let go of the oh, cart. And okay. <laughs> That'd be pretty important. I guess I could, technically. Don't, please, you'll destroy <laughs> don't, don't. it. Okay, just yeah, dump I'll... us all out on the stage. <laughs> yeah, I'll, just, I'll just mighty leap up there on my own. And, uh... I'm gonna... I'm gonna switch my psychic focus to Mantle of Awe, so I have a persuasion check advantage. Uh, advantage on persuasion checks. I didn't say that very well. Uh, and I'm gonna sort of show off my glamour weave and say, good townspeople, we are but business people here to enrich your town with our wealth and plenty. Oh, and I bat my eyelashes. All right. This should be a check involved with that, but we're out of time, so we will <laughs> pick it up from there next time. Excellent. All right. Why don't we do some plugs? Dylan, you got any plugs? Um... Not that I can think of besides the one that, uh, I'm, a, I'm in a game on Jeanette's channel on Sundays. Not this Sunday, but I think next Sunday. Uncanny Adventures on Twitch? Uncanny Adventures, yeah. All right. Skull and Shackles. And Soup, thanks again for jumping in while Sunspot is away. Yeah, no problem. Thank you guys for having me. Of course. Got any plugs? Yeah, uh, we got two games coming up on my regular channel, which is Laughing Dragon Inn. You can find us on Twitter um, by either following our DM, Annie Hatton, at Annie Hatton, or you can look up Laugh in Dragon, I believe, is our Twitter handle. Um, and we have got on Monday night at 7 Eastern Time, uh, we're going to be doing a zero session of a bubblegum shoe. Uh, game. We've been looking at that system for a while, and we're thinking about maybe running a campaign with only two investigators. So, like, best mystery friends kind of a thing. Gonna try it out with a real small group. Um, and then on Wednesday, we have, at 7 p.m. Eastern also, our Spelljammer game, where me and Sean will be playing. Oh, nice! You got the book. Nice. Jeanette, got any plugs? Oh, plugs. So yes, uh, next Sunday, so a week from tomorrow at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time on Uncanny underscore Adventures, uh, we will be doing Skull and Shackles. Um, we may have a smaller party because people have life things to do, but I think we're still going to play and try not to kill anybody. They're just pirating on the ship, so it's fine. And I'm still working on putting together my other Cthulhu game. Work's been crazy, so it's coming probably in two weeks from tomorrow, hopefully. And other than that, you can find me on Twitter and I got Patreon, but all my links are on Twitter. So go find me. I think my Twitter's like right down somewhere there. <laughs> Scotty, got any plugs? <laughs> yes, in uh, two hours, I'll be continuing our Trackless Sea adventures. Uh, the group just got done defeating the Shadow of Uptau. The land is ridden of all of its enemies, so Uptau and Mesro are back. What repercussions could that have to the country? to the world we'll see tonight um also um the aquatic race from storm rack the Darfelen, i'm never sure how i pronounce it correctly um will be up on the dm skill by the end of the month so look forward to that nice in one and a half hours on this channel i will be running hell's rebels where the group is in kintargo fighting against the evil Barzillai Thrun. I have fully prepared that campaign, and now I feel like I have truly mastered it. So it should be uh, it should be pretty good. And then tomorrow, 6.30 p.m. Eastern on this channel, Dungeon Academy. The group has escaped hell, and they're going back onto the Spelljammer, a legendary 
magic ship that flies through space. And they're looking now for the fifth piece of the Rod of Seven Parts. Spoiler alert, it's in Planescape, Sigil, City of Doors. So that's so. where they're going to be going next. Thank you, everybody, for watching. We will see you again next time. Bye-bye.